and happy welcome to season two, episode three of Y Team Stories. Today I am here with, I would probably say one of my nearest and dearest of the Y Team. Like I'm going to go that far and say it. I'm very excited to be introducing you to Mr. Tom Littlepage from South Australia. Tom, if you wanted to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you're from, where you went to school and kind of how you got involved in Wiley, that would be amazing. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Iz. Um, so yeah, I'm Tom. I'm from Adelaide. Um, I uh, I went to school um, up in the Adelaide Hills at a place called Cornerstone. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the college leaders there. And uh, because of that, I had to go on this weird conference thing, um, which I thought at the time was like so dumb. I was like, this is going to be so cringe. It's going to be so awful. I'm not going to like, no, I'm not going to know anyone. And there was a bit of that, but that was after, you know, after 15 minutes, it was kind of uh, gone. So yeah, I, it was in 2016 um, when I, I graduated in 2016. So I was on um, Adelaide conference in 2016 and met Wiley uh, through there. Went back um, after a couple of years and um, it felt like, um, Felt like coming home. It was it was great to to come back in a very different capacity than being a, a participant, but um, rewarding nonetheless. Yeah, totally. I love that. I love that nothing is ever like straight down the path of you. Like I love that there's so many twists and turns and everything. And um, that kind of leads on to my next question, which is, how would you describe yourself in three words? Um, I pride myself on my ability to be adaptable. So adaptability. Um, and, um, I think flexibility would kind of tie into that as well. Um, I think I, I would like to, to stay, um, joyous. I would love people to kind of describe me as that. I always try and be as kind of upbeat as possible. Um, I don't know, can I say moody? <laughs> it's kind of, I would just say contradiction because like, it's a bit like I could be all those things on Monday and then Tuesday I'll be completely different. So it literally depends what day of the week you find me. <laughs> I love that so much. And I, I can definitely vouch for all three of those. So I'll let you have it. My next question for you is what is your favorite thing to do where you live? Like if I was just going to come visit you in Adelaide for the day, like maybe like two like simple things that we would do or like maybe a fake restaurant. Okay. So, um, Oh, that's a really good question. I, I mean, Mount Lofty is a classic. That's a that's a come to Adelaide, have to do Lofty. So we could we could do that for sure. Um, I would definitely I would definitely take take you up to the Adelaide Hills. Some amazing wineries up there. It's like beautiful and picturesque. I'd show you where I grew up. Um, I'd take you to meet Barney, my dog. Oh, he would love that. Gosh, what a mix. What an eclectic mix of places and things to do. I love it so much. On the note of Barney, I would love to know, what's your spirit animal? It's funny, because as soon as you said that, I immediately thought of uh, when I was on, uh, when I was a, a first time mentor on conference, Sean Law like asked this exact same question. and. My spirit animal was um, a hippopotamus because I love being in the water all the time. I was a swimming instructor for years. I go to the beach and like, even if it's four degrees, I'll still go swimming. Um, but I also simultaneously love doing absolutely nothing at the same time. Um, and my group that I had on conference, like they called, they called our group the hipster potamus because they wanted to put Thomas in there as well. So it was a combination of hipster, hippopotamus and Thomas. So I think it still applies. Like, I think it still works. So let's just go with hippopotamus. That was a very long winded answer for a very simple question. But I mean, this is what you get with me. Oh, that's so random. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone describe themselves as a hippopotamus. <laughs> I'm one in a million, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so great. My next question is, if you could have dinner with any person alive or dead, who would it be and what would you talk about? It's a funny one because again, like 
I'm horrible at making decisions. So if you had asked me this question yesterday, you weren't going to a completely different answer. If I had to choose someone um, right now, it's a, a guy called Noel Bombach, who is probably my favorite director at this moment. Um, he directed a movie called Marriage Story, which came out early this year, which is amazing. Um, I love that movie. Movies like Francis Ha, The Squid and the Whale. Um, I'm sure a lot of these movies, everyone's just like, oh, these are dumb, like, indie movies. And they are, but I'm a dumb indie filmmaker, so it works. Um, so, yeah, we'd, it would be old mate Noah, and we'd talk about vintage lenses and glass, and um, we'd talk about old, you know, the subtle nuances of the colour palette of 16mm film, and, you know, I'd just, like, be so self-indulgent just for an evening. Goodness gracious. I would not thrive at that table. I'll let you know now. I would be so hopeless. Similar vibes, probably different answer, but again, never know how, how the day's going, how we're feeling. Uh, if you could present a TED talk, what would be your topic and why? Um, I had a moment the other night. Uh, it was 3 a.m. I think it was on Wednesday morning or something like 3 a.m. And I woke up um, because I was having a high five, I was type 1 diabetic, so my glucose level was low, so my body woke, I was low enough for my body to wake me up. Um, so I had to get up and go and have some sugar. So I didn't end up in a coma, classic on brand me. Um, and because I was having a hypo, I was like sweaty and gross. So I stripped off down to my undies and like sat on my kitchen floor at 3 a.m. and ate a like peanut butter sandwich. And I had this moment of realisation as I was sitting there how absurd and ridiculous this, like, scenario is. Like, what had to happen previously for me to, like, be in this moment right now? And then I started, like, spiralling and I was like, well, what is, like, the statistical odds of, like, me being a human being, like, me being alive right now? And I did, like, a whole bunch of research and... There was one thing that I found, an article, and it was a. It said that the odds of you being born are one in, and then it's the number 10 with 2,685,000 zeros followed after it. And I sat there and I just started like, like laughing so hard sitting on the kitchen floor at 3 a.m. in my underwear because I was like, this is so absurd. And then I like started actually thinking about it. I was like, why do I worry about anything? Like, why do I get caught up in my own, like, I don't, I don't know, my own rubbish and my own garbage? Why do I get caught up in so much of like the periphery of what actually life is about when the chances of me just existing are so astronomically like crazy? Why do I get caught up? in so much of like the periphery stuff that doesn't matter. If you're watching this back right now, my face just then was literally like, for the whole five minutes that Tom was talking just then. Now that you've already blown my mind, like literally three questions in, uh, what is a skill that you have that you could teach to others? I feel like there's so many things that uh, you can teach, whether it is like a practical skill that like can help somebody do something so you know like I was a swimming teacher for many years and um I I have literally taught probably thousands of people how to swim which is something I'm very like proud of so if anyone doesn't know how to swim uh hit me up I'll give you mates rates um so that's probably that's probably good I could teach teach a lot of people how to swim I taught all the way from like little tiny little babies where we used to like sing Ring a Ring a Rosie and stuff like that. And then I used to like teach the adults as well, uh, which was hilarious. So there you go, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I've, I'll, I won't ramble too much. I'll just say swimming, specifically butterfly. I'm very good at the old butterfly. Before we switch it up a little, my final kind of like big question, I guess for you is that um, at Y Lead, our five colors of leadership, let's see if I get these, are red, passion, green for growth, white for integrity, blue for vision, and yellow for service. Good job. Uh, which one of these colours currently resonates with you and why? Good question. Um, I think I would probably have to say right now that like service, I think, is something that's kind of um, 
that I'm paying more attention to. I think one of the most important things that we can do is live a life of service. And that was something that we were raised on as, as kids, me and my siblings, is that um, my mum raised us uh, with the idea that in, in, in no situation, in no circumstances, are you ever more important than anyone else. And to live your life properly, you need to live it in the service of others. I hear a lot of like creative people and artistic people will say, oh, I make the stuff I make for me. You know, whether that is just on like a base craft level or where, whether it's something deeper than that. But I think, you know, art is only art if people enjoy it. If no one watches it or sees it or, or experiences it, then it's not art. Like, so I, I feel, you, you know, you need to share and you need to serve in order to get what you're seeking by making that thing or being creative by sharing it and serving it to people. So it's kind of, you know, two sides of the same coin, I guess. Yeah, that's so cool. Oh, I love it. I, again, I just could listen to you talk all day. I'm so here for it. <laughs> um, we're going to switch it up a little bit now and do our like fast five kind of situation. Um, basically, it's just a one word answer. Might be a challenge for you. We'll see how we go. That will be a challenge, but we'll have a go. <laughs> okay, great. Number one, beach or forest? Beach. Savory or sweet? Savory. Stan or Netflix? Stan. Mm, amen. Road trip or plane trip? Road trip. Early riser or night owl? Early riser, 100%. Wow, I'm very impressed. They were indeed one word answers. Great job. So before we finish, I've got like a few questions that I wanted to ask you. As I said, um, it'd be really cool to like hear you chat a little bit about your podcast. So I guess I just wanted to ask, maybe if you could just explain what your podcast is or maybe like how it came to fruition sort of situation. Yeah, it was funny. Um, so uh, yeah, I run a podcast called Fearless with Tom and Jem. Jem is my co-host. Um, Jem and I met when we were uh, working at the Adelaide Fringe together. Um, and it was very funny how our friendship came about because uh, we're both very, very different, but both very much. Like we have a lot of shared similarities. Um, and one of the things that we bonded over, whether we, this was, uh, a kind of conscious thing or not I don't know but we almost bonded over our trauma and stuff that's happened previously in our life so um the podcast is it's called fearless for a reason we talk about um our lives and the things that we've experienced and we talk about a whole bunch of other uh sometimes abstract sometimes more practical concepts um and we talk about it um fearlessly and what that means is it, it it doesn't mean that we don't have any fear talking about it but it means we acknowledge the fear and we still do it anyway because we know it's worthwhile um so for me there's a there's a lot of things that i talk about that i draw from my experience with my brother who is almost 12 years ago passed away from cancer um and um a few years ago um Gemma experienced a sexual assault and she's a survivor of sexual assault and there's a lot of similarities that we experienced in going through our trauma and going on our kind of healing journeys so the very first episode we recorded was just kind of almost as a one-off just um us talking about our trauma and and how messed up so much of you know our lives have been and how much it's like affect affected who we are but on the other side of that same coin we speak a lot about our healing journeys and, and things like that and um at the end of that we were kind of like this was like good we should like i feel like we should do this again and we just put the first one out there just to see you know to kind of test the water and, and people really loved it and um we've we've we're on kind of all out all the mainstream platforms now spotify apple podcasts um, you know, we've got a couple hundred followers on our Instagram now, um, getting a couple hundred listeners every podcast, which is really cool. Um, but we talk a lot of, uh, we, talk, we, we talk about, again, anything. Like we've got episodes on, you know, aging and, and whether we feel we're running out of time to do the things that we want to do and we have to 
give up on our dreams to go get a nine to five job and be an adult. We kind of just use it as a platform to share our experience because at the foundation of all of this, we know that vulnerability breeds vulnerability and that when we are vulnerable and share that, it gives other people, other people permission to do the same. And I think that is so important. You know, if, if, if I can tell somebody about my experience and, um, you know, something resonates with them and they go, oh yeah, I, I am normal because someone else has experienced that or someone else has felt that too. I feel like that makes all of the work worthwhile. If you had any words for, I guess, other people in our Y team community that might be looking to start a podcast or maybe um, be looking for a platform to share their vulnerability or their words, what sort of advice would you give them? Good question. Um, find your team. Um, for me, I found um, one of my best friends and a co-host all in one. Um, that was never the plan. That was never intentional. But the advice I would give is find your team because being vulnerable and being real and being authentic is terrifying. It's scary. But if someone's there doing it with you, it's a little bit less scary um, and it makes it a little bit easier. Um, and for me, I, I think, you know, when we have our successes, I get to share that with people. I get to share that with Gemma and the other people involved in our podcast. Um, so if there are people who are looking to find a way of expressing this, expressing themselves and sharing their story and sharing their vulnerabilities, I would say do it, but you don't have to do it alone. Find a team, find your people um, and get to work. It's as simple as that. Thank you so much for joining us, Tom. As always, I love sitting and chatting with you and I hope that the people love you as much as I love you and we will see you again next week.